Hey guys, it's Julian and today I'm going to be talking to you about how to make solo style tech house and style of like Martin, Ikin, Andrea Oliva, Solardo, that style of stuff. As usual, you can get the full project files, samples, MIDI, presets, everything that you just heard in the intro is available right at the top of the description for just five dollars. This really helps support me, so definitely go pick it up if you want to support and you enjoy what you just heard. And yeah, let's dive in. Alright, so first thing we got up top is gonna to be the kick, which sounds like this. Now this one, you can see the main processing here, obviously, you know, you're just going to want like a nice, fat, powerful house cake. You'll notice this one's a little bit more like, like a little bit softer, I think, than a lot of the other cakes that you guys have probably seen me talk about on the channel. So that's something you want to keep in mind when you're making the cake. It's like, not really like, oh, am I using like the right saturation or compression, but like really just going down to like the sound that you have in the sample you know what i mean like just really listening like this is this like a softer kick is this a harder like more 909 style kick and then just being able to like kind of like really judge that but then also still having like a softer kick that has the punch and what i mean by that is i can kind of show you on the spectrum right like this is obviously like a softer kick it doesn't have that like like you might have with like a 909 kick but if you look down here it still like really hits and so that's the key. And then the main processing here is that I've tuned it. You can see, yeah, we've got it tuned to A. That's the key of our track. You can see there's the bass line. So just make sure your kick is tuned. Sometimes it likes to bounce around. Like, it'll say it's fine and then it's over there and stuff. But this is good. And then also this high pass filter, which is just here in the intro. And then at the end there. Then we have the basses. So what we're doing here is it's essentially like one bass line across three different sounds, right? Like the groove is dun 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 So what it is is it's the synth bass mostly, right? That just goes dun 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 and then we leave this quarter note open and then it just goes dun 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 And that's actually a pretty simple bass line there as well. You can see, yeah, it's just the root note. We're going up to A sharp, which there's a little glide I'll show you in the synth, and then it goes down. And then back up, like, very simple stuff there. But it's all about leaving that little space. And then we can just throw in these little toms. Like, you just create that little short sequence with those, which all that is, is it's just taking the toms and just making, like, this one where I've taken it, and it's spread across different octaves. And then the other one just goes doom. So it's just like a doo doo doo. But just kind of like sequencing those like that essentially. Like it's not that hard. It's just thinking about less like the individual mini and more like the overall track, right? And then you just plug it in in between that little space you made with the synth. And the reason why we do this is because, you know, in theory, we could just do like this bass line, right? Like we could just make it really simple. Just like a half note, just like over and over that. And I experimented with that a little bit when I was making this video, but if you listen, like... That just gets boring a lot faster for me, you know? Like, this way, like, we have something a little bit more exciting. And there's kind of a nicer groove happening between the kick and the bass as well. So for effects on this one, the first thing here is we just have an EQ, which is just boosting the lows. And this is just one of those things to kind of bring out those like really powerful, fat, and low-end frequencies a little bit more. There's without it. And then with the EQ here, it just doesn't quite have that same level of pressure until you turn this on. Then we have this auto pin, which is just making everything bounce off of the kick. And then finally, just a high pass filter, which just comes in for the intro and that one part. The main little detail here, though, is you'll notice it actually goes a bit lower than the kick high pass filter. Like, the kick is about there, 219 hertz. This one's at, like, 70, so just kind of letting through a little bit more low end on this one. 
Oh uh, yeah, then we have the percussion, which is only grouped together for like one tiny thing. There's not that much happening on the group, as you can see. I'll explain why we're doing that, but it's really just about the individual sounds. So the first thing here is going to be the clap snare. So this is made with this clap. Like a nice punchy clap. Right together with this snare, which you can see has the shorter reverb on it. And we're just getting like a really nice like punch that way. It's kind of like the best of both because you get the but then it's also got the and that's just going to sit really nicely over the kick. Then we have the main hi-hat which is made of three layers. So the first layer second and then the third. You can hear the first one kind of gives you the punch the second one gives you like that 909 kind of like and then the third one gives you the really like like bright bright high end and then you put them all together and you get one very full sounding hi-hat and that's no processing you, know, you don't need a whole bunch of extra compression or saturation it's just three sounds that when you put them all together at the same time it's gonna fill it out really nicely and make one really fat sound then we have this live shaker, just like a nice live organic loop in there. I think it's important to bring some live organic stuff into here. If you just have the program percussion, it's going to get a bit flat. So you can see we've got that. We have like this bongo, as well as these all these little percussions. So that's all the program percussion. That's just kind of all fitting together. You can hear like the little nuances there. And how it's all fitting it together. So you can see like it's not just a bunch of different sounds happening at, at one time, but it's like they're all kind of fitting together. And that's how you have to program that. And the way you do that is start with something really simple, right? Like you know, maybe we start with just this bongo. And then you can bring in something that's kind of playing off of that, right? And then it's another thing playing off of that. And before you know it, you might have like four or five of these. And that's essentially what's going to create the group. Then we also have this little mid percussion here. Which is just like this nice little organic loop that I chopped up. And you can hear how that's fitting into the groove. We have this live percussion. Just like some nice like organic kind of like live shaker type of stuff. And it really brings it to life. Again, I think if you only have the program percussion, it's going to be a bit flat. Like if I turn this off and I turn off the live shaker, you can see like the groove is there. It's just missing that like real like live kind of human element. So that does that really well. Then we have the last thing inside of this percussion group, which is this 909 ride. And so that's just a ride from a 909. I've got a high pass filter on it. It's got this auto pan, so that's what's making it kind of like swoop up like that. And then we also have this echo here. And what's happening is this is really fast, and then it's on the ping pong setting. So you get this like kind of wider stereo effect. I've noticed with rides, a lot of the time, like you need it to have like that kind of width to it. Like if it's just that, it doesn't really work. It needs to be a bit wider than everything else. And then on the group here, what we've got is this EQ8. So what it's doing is we essentially are just using it for a low pass filter, right? It's just in this part, just to bring that in to make it a little bit smoother. And then you hear it kind of like makes it fade out a little bit as we go right up to the drop. So then this way, it's disappearing. 
And then it hits super hard when it comes back again. So that's all we're doing. And the only reason why I'm using uh, an EQ for this is because, if you notice, with Ableton's low pass, see how if I bring it all the way up, it's still only at 19.9 kilohertz. So it might seem kind of nitpicky, but you see, like, you're kind of cutting off that little bit of high on there. So I prefer to use an EQ8 for this wherever you can. Because that doesn't cut that off. But yeah, and then after that, so then after that, it's pretty much just like the effects kind of background layers, right? The first one is this hi-hat layer, which sounds like this. So all this is, is just a little bit of white noise going through a high-pass filter, and then I have an auto pan on it, and a little bit of reverb. And what this is doing is it's really just kind of like boosting the high end and the percussion a little bit. What I mean by this is if I turn this off, so here's without this. And then with it. Okay, with that. With. It's so subtle, but you really hear it, like, if I turn it off, like, it's just adding that kind of, like, bright, like, sizzle to the percussion. And that's all that's doing, but it's a great way to add that, because a lot of times, like, you could be sitting there with, like, an EQ on this group, just, like, trying to boost the high end and get that to work, but sometimes it might not be about boosting the high end, it might just be about adding another layer that can kind of fill that out. Then we have these risers. Cool. So the first one here is just a pitch riser. This is made with operator and the way we're making this is it's like this cool FM patch where essentially you have these two fine tunes being moved up at different times. Like you can see it's a little bit different. So what's happening is the two oscillators are kind of clashing against each other there. And you can see if we get rid of one of those automations, it's a lot more flat, right? So it's just adding that extra little bit of depth. So now we kind of have like multiple things moving around in pitch like that. On top of that, we also have a little bit of a low pass filter automation. And then I'm automating the pitch on, or the fine tune, I should say, on the frequency shifter to get that last little like bit of pitch bend there. And then also a bit of reverb on that. So yeah, it seems like it's a bit more complicated than it is really. It's just playing around with different FM stuff and automating different things to kind of make it rise, rise essentially. And then the second one is just white noise. So this is just white noise bandpass filter which has the automation to go down and then back up and then down here again. Bit of reverb, another high pass filter, and then we just have this auto pan which comes on to make it sound like it's being side chained to the kick there. <laughs> And the last thing down here is going to be the vocal. So what we're doing here is just kind of like, you know, pretty classic, sort of old school house style vocal. You can see it's fitting into a cool time as well because it's kind of like... Total ecstasy. Like, it's not just right on the one there. And then you can see it's going through a bit of echo, a bit of drum bus, you know, pretty straightforward stuff. And then we have this auto pan here. And what that's doing is it's doing 16th notes, but the phase is turned to zero. So it's not actually affecting the panning. It's not like we're doing, like, this crazy auto pan effect. It's just kind of, like, making it so it's only affecting the volume, essentially. And so what's going to happen here? And then when we just automate that amount to go up now, it does like this cool like chopping effect. And something I've heard in a few Solardo tracks, like just kind of like, you know, it's different ways of working with vocals and chopping them that aren't just like, you know, EDM vocal chops, right? Like kind of doing some more interesting and creative and inventive things to just make it sound more interesting. <laughs> You can also set this to 8th notes. Or even triplets. Go, 
Uh, yeah, it's just kind of a nice way to chop that and get something a little bit more interesting there. And yeah. So that is going to be it for this one, guys. I hope you enjoyed. As always, make sure to like this video as well as subscribe. And let me know what you think of this video in the comments. Like I said in the beginning, you can get the full project file, samples, MIDI, presets, everything like that from this video is available right at the top of the description on my Bandcamp for just $5. Again, this really helps support me. I'm not making a whole lot just off of the YouTube videos, but with these sample packs and different things like this, we're able to keep going and keep bringing you guys awesome new tutorials like this that aren't out there on the internet every single day. So thank you very much for the support, everybody. Link is at the top of the description, and I will see you tomorrow.